Hey, what's up, everybody? Paul from Hashtag Sports. So I wanted to get uh, an episode cut that kind of walks through the craziness that's about to happen. So we're walking up to the uh, beginning, but also closer to the end of the offseason program for the NFL. Obviously, we talk about the Buffalo Bills here, but this is not really specific to the Bills. It's really about how the NFL roster rules are when it comes to the preseason, when the deadlines are, what all the designations mean, uh, practice squad, that is the type of stuff that is now very important business going into 2022 because you're having to come up with closer and you have to make these uh, determinations uh, sooner and sooner, the date as far as when they're happening. So you see at the bottom of the ticker are all the roster dates for you. So that is like the 85-man roster date. That was yesterday as of the date of this recording. Uh, that was 816. You had to cut down to 85. The Buffalo Bills had had done that, releasing uh, several players. The next roster cut isn't until Tuesday, uh, August. I'm sorry, yeah, Tuesday, August 23rd is the next one. All these are four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The Bills have to be down to 80, so they have to cut another five players. Uh, and then finally is uh, the 53 man roster deadline, uh, and uh, that one is coming up August 30th. Again, all Eastern Standard Time. So let's talk a little bit about what the rules are on this. And I want to give a call up because we always want to make sure that we're giving uh, the best information possible. And there was a little backstory behind this, but I feel it's always important to make sure that we're honest. So here we go. Jessica Tennis in our comments section nine days ago said, hey, guys, you have to do a better job than this. Pup list during training camp versus the start of the season is a huge difference. The Bills can take Trey White off Pup anytime." Little context, we were talking about Trey White and specifically um, I had heard rumblings, right, of people saying uh, to IR Trey. And yes, you can put Trey White on injured reserve, but if you do that prior to the 53-man roster, his season's over. If you IR a player prior to those 53 um, prior to the 53-man roster being designated, that player's done for the year. And the message there was you don't want to do that. Uh, this is obviously a much larger conversation, which is why we have this episode. So let's go in, talk a little bit about the rules and specifically what you need to know uh, moving in. So that way, a lot of the stuff that may happen quickly makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so thank you, Jessica, for being uh, honest and, and transparent with us. So here is hopefully what everybody is going to need to know going into those roster cuts. So obviously, uh, Trey White, we'll just use him as an example. Actually, Eli Anku, we'll talk about him first. So Eli Anku, uh, defensive end slash defensive tackle for the Buffalo Bills, was also on the pup list with Tredavious White. Now, the pup list is the physically unable to perform list. There's also a non-football injury list. Uh, physically unable to perform means that they're recovering from a football injury. Trey White, obviously, you know, had uh, had an ACL issue. Um, and the non-football injury list would be like if a player got into a car accident um, prior to training camp that was going to physically hold them out. It's a non-football injury list. OK, both of them are pretty similar, although they are ultimately different designations. So to talk specifically about PUP. What that means is the player is still allowed to be in meetings, but the player can't do team activity like team practice uh, while they are recovering. Uh, that's why you'd see Trey do a lot of work on the side. Well, he's not allowed to practice with the team, but he is allowed in the meetings. Now, the interesting thing about players on the pup list is that they do count against your 90 man preseason roster. Obviously, that's down to 85 right now. So Trey's taking up a spot there. What isn't happening is once you get to the 53 man roster, if Trey will remain on the pup list, uh, he won't count against your 53 man roster. So Trey's on the pup list right now. If you're going to keep him on the pup list, that means he's going to miss the first four games of the NFL season, but that allows you to keep another player on your 53 man roster that you might not have kept otherwise, uh, because Trey won't be taking up a roster spot. He'll be on the pup list. Now, after four weeks, uh, Trey could be activated from that pup list. And then at that point, you have to make a roster decision, right? Uh, you have to create room for that player on your 53 man roster. Uh, so that means normally you have to release a player. Maybe the bills would have a corresponding move. If a player gets hurt, um, they might move them to IR. Um, and then that roster spot would open up and Trey could slide into that spot. That is a, that's a moving target. No way to know what's going to happen now, but I think there's some important things to talk about. So item number one, you have to spend four weeks on the practice squad to start the season. The player is allowed to return to practice. Um, 
placed on injured reserve or released within five weeks of that time. Reserved or released within five weeks. The deadline to decide if a player needs to stay on the pup into the regular season is upcoming. The Bills have to make a determination as to whether Tredavious White is going to remain on the pup list by August 23rd. Now, that's a rule that not a lot of people are talking about, but that is a thing um, verified in a couple different articles. Now, these rules have changed. So if you are someone that's saying, wait, Paul, these rules don't sound the same. You're right. The physically unable to perform list previously was a six game designation, right? It has been shortened to four, but that's not the only rule change. Um, the, the, um, the injured reserve rules are very similar in that respect. So previously, uh, like last year, as an example, uh, you could have a player designated on injured reserve and they could return an unlimited number of times, right? And a lot of that was because of the sickness, uh, positive tests uh, for COVID. So what would happen is a player would test positive for COVID. You could put him on the injured reserve list and that was, he could stay there for a few games and you take him on off. You could do that on a limited number of times. Uh, that designation is no longer available. Uh, you can still designate a player as you know, uh, injured, uh, illness, non-football injury list. So you could put a player on injured reserve for a viable reason. Um, however, you only get eight returns from that. So what that means is you only have eight times that a player can come back from the injured reserve. Um, now, mind you, each player only has two opportunities to go to the injured reserve and come back, but the team itself only gets eight designations of players to return for this upcoming season, which again is different than the way the rules previously were. Those injured reserve rules are now different. Before it was unlimited, now the team only gets eight designations. The same player can have as many as two designated returns, um, but no more than that. Now, again, if a player gets put on injured reserve before the 53-man roster, which is being designated August 30th, that player's out for the season. But once a 53-man is done, a player can come on and off injured reserve, uh, but just in a different fashion than previous. So this leads into, well, what do you do for the rest of the season, right? Because those aren't the only rules that have changed. The practice squad rules have also changed quite a bit. So rules on the practice squad. So other than the fact that the practice squad is now 16 players, it was previously 14, teams are now allowed to have practice squad, as practice squad eligible players elevated for three games. That is different. It was previously two. Uh, and now practice squad players can be elevated for an unlimited number of postseason appearances without counting against the 53-man active roster, which is crazy to think that at the end of the season, players who are cut, like a Mark Ingram as an example, Devonta Freeman a couple seasons ago, Kenny Stills a couple seasons ago, those players were on Buffalo's practice squad or in Mark Ingram's case could have been added or was discussion could have been added to a practice squad. If a player is cut at the end of the season is still eligible to be added to a team's practice squad, they can appear in another team's postseason roster, which is crazy to think that that could happen, but it's totally possible. So of those um, 16 practice squad spots, six of them can be players with unlimited NFL experience. So those are players who are not actively on somebody else's roster. And now you can have six veteran players on your practice squad, which is, again, an awesome opportunity because you're going to need to activate players throughout the course of the season. And, and the rules are different now. You can activate up to three practice or you can activate a practice squad player for up to three games without subjecting them to waivers. What usually had to happen was if you had a player on the practice squad and you wanted to bring them up for a game, if you wanted to send them back down to the practice squad, you had to waive that player. You had to let the other, they had to let the rest of the league take their shot at that player. Those aren't the rules anymore. Now you can elevate a practice squad player for up to three games without subjecting them to waivers. Again, another rule change. So lots of changes when it comes to the NFL for 2022. And all these, I think, are for the better. There's not a single rule here where I go, eh, this one sounds kind of dicey to me. Uh, you could designate a player for PUP, right? And the in um, in the preseason, they do not count against uh, your 53-man roster when you move them to PUP for the season. But again, that designation has to come sooner rather than later. Uh, August 23rd is the deadline to designate a uh, long-term pup. So that's whether the player is going to be on the pup list um, uh, once you make your 53-man roster cuts. 
then. The pup got shortened in the regular season from six games to four games, which is again great. Um, injured reserve is no longer unlimited. You can have only up to eight designated players to return, but again, the rules for what designates a player hasn't changed. And then practice squad, you're increasing your roster size. So we have more jobs out there and more roster spots for a GM like Brandon Bean to absolutely ice the competition out of some great players um, and uh, continue to do the job of building championship caliber team. Uh, this is Paul from Hashtag Sports. Thanks for sticking along. I wanted to clear up a few of those things because again, a longer conversation, broader conversation uh, when it comes to NFL roster rules. Not exactly a thing everybody loves, but I think stuff that is 100% absolutely required to know to really, really, really get in the teeth of what your team is going to do. Thanks for following us here at hashtag sports. Make sure to follow us on TikTok, on uh, Instagram, on uh, obviously you're following us on YouTube, but if you haven't, the button's down there. You could obviously go and join our Patreon as well. Thank you to Mr. Rogers home. Sean Rogers has hit a thousand subs. Congratulations to him and the hashtag tournament uh hashtag uh not so invitational golf tournament is coming up promo for that will be out soon make sure you get your team together is the day before the bills monday night home opener that will be at diamond hawk golf course and uh we always had great prizes that we've got a bunch of really awesome and really unique prizes again uh to give away golfers uh we are thrilled and uh we'll be making charity announcement there soon as well thank you so much for hanging out with me again paul from hashtag sports have a good one